Hi, I'm Sarah Redshaw. I'm Managing Editor for babycentre.co.uk and today I'm joined by Professor Lucy Chappell, who's the Chief Scientific Advisor for the Department of Health and Social Care. And Lucy's agreed to answer some of the questions that baby centre parents have about COVID-19, the vaccine uh, and the booster. Lucy, thank you for joining us. You're very busy. I know you have uh, other roles in, in your profession yeah. as well. Thanks, Sarah. And thank you for inviting me. Yes. So I'm still a Professor of Obstetrics at King's College London and I'm also an honorary consultant obstetrician at Guys and St Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust and I'm doing an antenatal clinic every week which very much brings all of these issues to life in front of me um, as I talk to pregnant women each week about their pregnancy but also about COVID-19 vaccination. Thank you and given that the restrictions have been lifted and, and, and easing and guidelines are in place uh, and people have been told to live with Covid now we've got pregnant women in the baby centre community wondering if it's even worth getting the booster while pregnant or whether they should wait what's your advice? Covid remains serious for unvaccinated pregnant women and we really want to keep pregnant women and their babies safe so we've done so much work in the last year to look at that safety and to, to give pregnant women good quality information about the, the risks of COVID-19 infection and the safety of the vaccine. We know it's a difficult decision for women and that's why we want healthcare professionals, including obstetricians, midwives and GPs to be there to support women. Each week in clinic, I often talk to women and ask them what their concerns are and just individualize it so that I'm talking with them, I'm not talking at them. Um, Lucy, some women are worried that the vaccine can cause fertility issues, whether that's when they're trying to conceive um, or they can cause miscarriage or stillbirth if they're pregnant. Um, and sometimes their own midwife or health professional has told them to wait. What reassurances can you give? That's a really good question. So if we take it into two separate parts, the, the, the fertility issue and then the pregnancy complications. So for the fertility issue, um, there's been a lot of uh, research now some looking at periods because women have reported changes to those their periods. If those are um, th those seem to be short lived, and uh, and periods seem to return to normal very very uh, soon afterwards. But the more important one is that we are not seeing any impact on fertility, and there's work from the UK and the US to to support that. There's really good resources on the British Fertility Society website that give more information. Uh, but certainly, all the fertility specialists are strongly recommending the vac vaccination. So for pregnancy complications, uh, we are seeing a higher rate of preterm birth, about two to three times higher, and stillbirth, sadly, particularly um, in the last Delta wave. And this is really related to uh, pregnant women who are seriously ill with COVID-19 infection, that the doctors recommend preterm birth to get the mum better because that can help get more oxygen into the into the mum's lungs. So it's not the vaccination that um, can cause miscarriage or stillbirth, it's the complications due to the pregnant woman catching COVID. Absolutely right, Sarah. So we've seen that with report, all of those complications reported with COVID-19 uh, infections. And importantly, the UK Health Security Agency is publishing data every month that reports on outcomes and shows that the that the chances of stillbirth or low birth weight are, or, or other complications are absolutely no higher in those vaccinated. So a very strong safety signal that the COVID-19 vaccination is good in pregnancy. And is there, if somebody is pregnant and they've decided to get vaccinated, is there a, a safest time to be vaccinated during pregnancy? Our data have looked at vaccination at all stages of pregnancy, and we are not seeing any concerning safety signals from whether you have it in the first trimester, the second trimester or the third trimester. So the right time is now for a pregnant woman, because that's the best way for her to protect herself for, for, that, for that point. We know that COVID-19 infection is more serious in the third trimester. But for example, if a pregnant woman that I see, if, if she's saying, you know, when shall I do it? I say, well, you can do one dose now and another dose in eight to 12 weeks. And, and get yourself protected. Um, it's been said in the media particularly that the Omicron variant is mild. Um, is this the same for pregnant women? There's some confusion in the community about whether pregnant women would suffer from mild side effects as well. So for Omicron, we've just seen data from that Oxford study published, the UCOS study, and it's saying that for women who get COVID-19, uh, even with the Omicron variant, 
um, there's a similar chance to getting uh, severe respiratory symptoms as with the, the first wave. But this is also related to the fact that we've got a higher proportion of, of pregnant women unvaccinated and those severe, severe um, symptoms and, and complications happen predominantly in, in the unvaccinated women. So to be vaccinated, we're recommending two doses and the booster dose. And amongst women who have had three doses uh, and are fully vaccinated, the chances of getting severe complications are very small indeed. And that mirrors the data for the rest of the population. It's the vaccine that protects against all those um, adverse outcomes uh, in Omicron as much as, uh, as, the, as the other types. The side effects for the booster obviously vary, um, you know, among, among people. Are, are you seeing that they're different for pregnant women? Very similar. So um, we're seeing similar local side effects, broadly speaking, you know, you might get a sore arm. And would some women report feeling tired or, or under the weather for a, for a day or two? Um, and, and we, you know, we know that, and, but but it's still worth their while compared to being seriously ill with, with COVID. And for, for mums who are planning to breastfeed, there are a question about the vaccine being, being passed on. Um, should they wait until after they've stopped breastfeeding or should uh, they get the vaccine straight away as soon as possible? So we would recommend that pregnant, that breastfeeding women get vaccinated. Um, and uh, but, but also to think about getting vaccinated in pregnancy so that you are protecting your newborn. So both are similar. The vaccine does not go across the placenta. The vaccine does not go into the breast milk, but the antibodies do. So many pregnant women are familiar with getting whooping cough vaccine in pregnancy for exactly this reason, that you make antibodies which are protective and that's, that keeps your newborn baby protected from naught to eight weeks before the baby gets their first vaccines. And it's very similar with the COVID-19 vaccine. If you make out protective antibodies and get boosted so that you continue to make those antibodies over and above the, what you might get from an infection, you can pass those protective antibodies to your baby. We are seeing more cases of, of newborns and under ones uh, uh, admitted with Omicron than we have seen in our previous waves. So um, we've had really strong support from paediatricians and the other child health experts to say that, that they would like support mums getting vaccinated so that they are passing on those protective antibodies. And can I just pick up on that point? What, um, what is the reason behind a higher number of under ones being um, are catching COVID? So we've seen, uh, we've talked, we've looked at a number of reasons for this, and some of it might be because Omicron itself is a little bit different, and it seems to have more uh, upper respiratory symptoms and slightly different symptomatology. Um, it's highly transmissible, which means that it's gone in. We've seen it go through the primary age school children as well, particularly. Um, and uh, we also know um, what we've talked about with the paediatricians is this is the NHS working. So when you ring with an under one and with fever or with any concern, the NHS system is working and saying, take your child to hospital to be checked out. In fact, seriously, serious illness in the under ones is very, very rare, particularly in children who don't have other conditions. But it's more that our, our healthcare system is doing what it should do at this time. So if if mums are worried, act on your instincts, phone phone for help, and 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 get your child seen. Lucy, we're two years on from um, from COVID, and there's been a lot of changes. There's data coming out all the time, but there's also been a lot of conflicting information for, for yeah. parents and pregnant women. And um, where are we now? We recognise that there has been. Um, conflicting information and that this has evolved and in some ways that just represents the normal process of science uh, providing additional answers but I think for pregnant women it's been hard so I start with the assumption that pregnant women want the best thing for themselves and their baby and that it's up to us as healthcare professionals to think about how we communicate that in a way that makes women feel listened to and included in that decision-making process. And that's what I do as an individual level in, in antenatal clinic. And it's what I think we need to do more widely in the community and working with all sorts of different groups of, of pregnant women, working through Baby Centre um, to, to ensure that we are clear and coherent about that messaging.
Lucy, can I just ask, um, what about the uptake among pregnant women for the vaccine? So we've seen uptake slowly rising. In the early months last year, at the beginning of uh, January 2021, it was just women who, pregnant women who are healthcare workers or social care workers or um, in the highest risk groups, those at highest risk of complications. And then, then the vaccine became available uh, much more widely. So month on month, we've seen an increase in the uptake and we've now got the majority of pregnant women, so over 50%, um, who have received a dose of, of uh, COVID-19 vaccination in pregnancy. And, and that is mounting each month. What's really shifted is that it's now become much more normal. It's, it's normalised vaccination uptake. So when I'm sitting in clinic now and I say, are you vaccinated? It's it's much commoner to say, yes, I've had it. And, and yes, I've had my booster. And, and I think what's, what how that helps is that a pregnant woman's peers are vaccinated. So she's not the outlier. She's now the, sort of within the norm. There is much more we could do to reach certain groups of women who are more hesitant. Uh, and, and, and that's certainly an area that we want to focus on. Thank you so much for joining us, Lucy.